Hello, everyone, and welcome to one of the first sessions um, at NestGen 22, Top 10 Do's of Building a Drone Dock. Here, you learn some of the must-haves and best practices of designing and engineering reliable and autonomous drone docks. So great, let's jump right into it. And uh, to set some context, I'd like to recount two key aspects of um, Nitin's opening address that we just witnessed. Um, the COVID pandemic revealed several operational challenges that simply could not have been overcome as efficiently without automation. And the, the second thing is modularity, right? The fact that everything we're trying to do here is to bring door in the box systems to the masses. And that means making sure that R&D as well can be as open and transparent as possible. And ensuring that anybody building on any layer of the engineering stack can take away from this session, we have two of our best product engineers on today's session. They've worked with several docking station partners on a similar mission to reduce cost and increase adoption of autonomous drone systems. Um, our first speaker, Havish, he studied electronics and telecommunication engineering and has been actively working in robotics since his academic days. He's been part of several robotics teams and competitions ranging across national and international levels where he's gained loads of experience and insights at quite a young age. Highly skilled at several tools and languages, 3D modeling and design software, Havish has proven to be quintessential to FlightBase's success. Amog also went through a similar journey, uh, you know, an alumnus of the most premium engineering college in India, Indian Institute of Technology or IIT. He took keen interest in robotics and autonomous systems projects during his degree in mechanical engineering. Highly proficient in several programming languages and deep learning, Amog has played a pivotal role to the success of the robotics department here at Flypace. So it looks like we're in good hands today. So I'll let them take over the days. Havish and Amog, all yours. All right, guys. So what, what do you think of when you hear the word docking station or also, you know, commonly known as drone dock? So we believe for most people, what it, when they think of a docking station, they think about a box, right? Which can somehow charge or replenish the battery of a drone once it has come back from its mission. Now, there are several, several ways of doing this, doing this. So swapping, like for example, the drone comes back with its uh, battery discharged and there's just one fully fresh battery ready to go. So it's just replaced and the drone flies away again, right? Or there's other ways where the drone comes, comes back and lands and then the same battery is charged through some kind of contact points or that same battery is charged through a wireless charging setup. So all of these three different options have their own positives and negatives. Like for the swapping option, there is no downtime, don't, downtime because it's almost like a human just changing the battery and going on. And when it is back charging using the contact points, then you actually have to wait for the duration, which might be something like an hour to an hour and a half for the battery to fully charge. But they both, but you know, for this kind of a contact point setup, it's pretty easy to build. It's not really complicated, but a battery swapping mechanism is very mechanically heavy. A battery charging mechanism, you have to deal with a bit of electronics, but really not as much. Now, a wireless charging mechanism is even more simpler, right? Because now there are no contact points. You just have to hover around, you know, the nearby area. So there are these different kinds of charging options that docking stations provide. And for most people, that is what a docking station is. It's just a box which can charge the battery of a drone or replenish, replenish its battery. But when we think of it like that, can we honestly go ahead with a box like that to production? Can we just take a box which can do this kind of an operation and give it to a customer and be like, okay, now you go ahead, you deploy this box somewhere in a remote area and the drone will be able to do autonomous missions because there's nobody required to charge this battery anymore, right? The, 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 doc, the drone can handle it. So the answer to that question actually is no. While drone, uh, well, battery servicing is a very essential, it's actually one of the many pieces that make up the puzzle of drone autonomy. It is not as straightforward as just that a box should have the ability to charge a drone. There are many other challenges. And today we'll look at those challenges and to address those challenges, what should drone, uh, you know, what should docking station manufacturers focus their attention on? And also how does FlightBase help you with this process so that your product, your, you know, invention and innovation can get to the hands of the customer and go to the market as quickly as possible. So moving on to the, moving on to the question of what actually does it take to convert a box which, which can service the battery of a drone and taking it, making it an actually autom automated docking station, which can help with autonomous drone operations. Right. So there are five main uh, issues that you need to address before you can say, I have a fully auto autonomous system. 
the first is reliability so just imagine right your docking station has been deployed somewhere in a remote area it is going to be switched on 24/7 it's going to be used for months on end so when it is being doing when it is doing that it's so important that it doesn't fail that the that every single uh, you know component and part inside is is resistant to failure or if there is some of some kind of failure it knows how to handle it them itself because if a person needs to keep visiting that place again and again just to fix the issues faced by the docking station then might as well have that person there 24/7 right no point of any docking station anymore similarly the next one is weatherproofing these docking stations are going to be deployed all over the world and we had really have experience of this and we have seen this happening that means a docking station has to handle really a wide range of weather conditions then safety anyone who has worked with lithium polymer batteries before knows that they have they are uh, you know hazardous materials and drones have one and if you have at least uh, if you uh, so the dock, uh, the docking station will have at least one right but if you have a strapping setup then you might have three or four uh, batteries inside your docking station so now you have to be really really sure that if something happens and one of the batteries catch fire it is not going to set fire to the whole building or basically compromise anybody's safety then drone and box coordination right so drone and box coordination is one of the most essential uh, components there are for for you to get to drone autonomy like if the box and the drone cannot talk, talk to each other how can they work together to achieve a goal you need some sort of communication between them and finally remote deployments so just you know putting a box somewhere remotely deploying it out there is not enough there is so much more that goes into remote deplo uh, deployments because that docking station is now uh, you know thousands of miles away it might as well be the thousands of miles away because that's what our customers want so you get a lot of issue challenges with respect to connectivity and the life cycle management of the of a docking station deployed this far away so let us look at these issues in a bit more detail so let's go with weatherproofing first because this is something that is that is very you know obvious and very uh, understandable for more people it's intuitive right so let's take heat how does heat affect it if you had a docking station which was you know uh, uh, placed somewhere really in a hot uh, place the very first issue you would have is that your processes are overheating and if they were already doing some task on capacity now it's overheated it's not going to uh, you know go into boost percentage it is not going it is not going to uh, it's not it's basically you're going to have performance lag it's going to that's going to be thermal throttling happening right and for example and also with drone batteries it's pretty common to see that drone batteries as soon as you bring them back from charging if you put them back in if you put them on a charging uh, pad they're not going to charge they actually wait until they have cooled down and, uh, under something like 40 degrees celsius before they actually start charging that means it's very important that your docking station does not overheat right on the other hand you have cold like assume you have to have a docking station which is in cold cold conditions and regions that means you know you can have condensations inside so there are a bunch of electronic systems and components inside the docking station and just imagine there's a thin layer of water on all of them can you imagine how really bad that is snow will also lead to the same thing which is water ingress snow and rain both of them will lead to the same things of water ingress right and then humidity all of these are issues that a docking station manufacturer has to address now other than the five issues that you can see on the screen there are a couple more for example dust ingress so if you have a docking station that is that can get dust into the system then you can expect some motors or mechanical components jamming or even if you have heat vents jamming out and not sufficient not being able to exhaust their heat properly through their vents and one in, one interesting case that we have uh, we have personally addressed is that if you deploy a docking station somewhere or like in a coastal area then because of the you know the more uh, content of salt in that moist air you get a lot more corrosion on the components than you normally do it's not just metallic components which corrode sometimes it's even issues uh, even rubber and plastics which you have in there which take a bit of a bit of a more than normal amount of beating just because they're placed right next to the sea so these kind of weather proofing is necessary for do uh, docking uh, you know this kind of uh, weather is a really important issue that docking station manufacturers have to consider then like i said reliability right so in reliability we have the mechanical electrical so you it has to be mechanically reliable the, sa uh, the same particular function that the docking station can do it needs to be done i don't know 10000 1 lakh times before it goes into production so that it's mechanically reliable it needs to be electrically reliable that means no issues of loose connection short circuits of or any of that kind the drone and the rc they also need to be reliable for performing operations 
right? It's not easy. Uh, so what that means is that every time you switch on a drone, if you have experience with drones, you must have seen, right? Every time you switch on a drone, the drone is not going to be like, I'm ready to go, I'm ready, ready to fly. Many times they throw some errors. They say, I have an error encoded error or I have an IMU error. How do you handle them? Now, usually if you are a human being right there, you know how to handle them because you see that you see the messages of how to handle them on uh, the RC or something like that. But this do docking station and the drone are deployed a thousand miles away. There are no humans, but still the docking station somehow needs to handle this issue. So drone and RC hardware are some things that the docking station needs to, you know, uh, account for its reliability and then drone landing. So think about it, right? So the, so you have a docking station, which is about maybe three feet by three feet, uh, you know, width and length in size and a drone just computes a mission and now it wants to come back into the docking station. Is it good every time that the drone tries to land inside the docking station? Is it going to reliably land every single time? Or is it going to miss it a few times and just land outside the docking station or maybe just clip the docking station on its way down and damage itself and the docking station? So you understand how, how dangerous that is, right? So you need a reliable solution for even this problem. Moving on, safety. Like I mentioned previously, lithium polymer batteries, one, more than one, any of them can lead to fire. You have to address this. It is it is a really it is a danger which can uh, which can endanger endanger human lives unauthorized access so you have a system out there which is which is connected to the internet so you have to be uh, you have to make sure that nobody can get into it right it's just like your emails you don't want anybody getting into emails similarly you don't want anyone doc getting into your docking station also physically the docking station has to be robust enough not to let vandals or you know, bad actors get into get into that and to and steal really expensive hardware of a drone and an RC, right? And you know, we have another example of of what can lead to a fire, something like a short circuit. So, going on drone and box coordination, drone like I explained to you before. So, what if the drone accidentally tries to take off when the docking station is still closed, the enclosure is still closed? The drone won't be able to take off, right? It's just going to hit inside the docking station something and damage a lot of things might even damage the battery and set it on fire. The opposite of this is also true. What if the drone is, has come for landing, but the docking station is closed? Now the drone can't land on the docking station. So how do you handle this? And the last one, let us say, the docking station was open and the drone did come, come for land, but somehow there was a little bit of an error by the, by the time it, it reached the docking station. So, but that error is not enough for the, for the drone to fall off, but at the same time, it is not safe enough for the docking station to close. When the docking station tries to close, it will crush the drone. So in this, all of these situations are which you need to understand, like which, which you need to realize in real time operation and stop it from happening. You need the coordination between the drone and the docking station, not to, you know, to not let issues like this happen. So going on. Uh, so the last one is remote deployments, of course, like I uh, mentioned previously, you have something which is so many so far away, if you have a software update, how are you going to update, update its software, how are you going to update its firmware, right? Uh, how are you going to keep an eye on everything that is happening inside the docking station in real time? How are you going to control it? How are you going to uh, resolve any issues that come up with the docking station remotely? And last one is connectivity, right? If you deploy a docking station somewhere really out there in the field, how will you provide internet or ethernet access to the docking station? These are all questions that a docking station manufacturer has to answer and he has to uh, address and be prepared for it before his box, which can service a battery, actually go into production and add value as a, as a component of drone automation. Now we'll go on to my dear friend, uh, colleague, my dear friend and colleague Amo, who will walk us through what can be done to, uh, to you know, handle these challenges by the docking station manufacturer. Amok, over to you. Uh, great, Havish, and thanks for putting up the key issues and problems that docking station manufacturers have to face day in, day out so eloquently today. So, uh, right, so as Havish has pointed out, the enormous challenges that you have to face can be a really daunting list to look at. So uh, what we have tried to attempt here is to kind of concise this list and come together with the top 10 do's list that uh, you as docking station manufacturers can kind of look at to and resolve a lot of the issues that Havish mentioned previously. So let's tackle this one by one. Uh, coming to power safe cooling systems. So this primarily stems from the reliability issue. So as Havish mentioned previously, there are errors that 
up in in other systems like you know rd into your docking station or a raspberry pi all of these systems are bound to develop errors when they run 24/7 throughout day in day out so it is very essential that you have capabilities inside your docking station which can you know, power cycle them turn them on and off so that most of these errors be it configurational or hardware specific are immediately resolved this also ensures that whenever you have a flight and if these systems have been re power cycled that means most of these random errors so to say do not occur in flight uh, habish can we move to the next one please thanks right so coming back to feedback based design now this is extremely critical for docking station manufacturers to incorporate into their design process and into their manufacturing process uh, what we essentially mean by feedback based design is that when drones and docking stations need to kind of communicate with each other they need to know the status of different systems within each other so that the entire orchestration of an autonomous dib system is smooth and for that it is highly essential that docking stations are able to provide feedback on all operations that they are doing uh, what we have mentioned here are four very critical operations and feedback not present on these might also might have adverse effects often leading to damages so let us look at them which is essentially your enclosure system so the systems that kind of uh, that kind of cover the entire docking station which might be a tray or a canopy kind of structure then there are power cycle systems the ones we talked about in our previous slide which are responsible for power cycling the drone the rice the rcs the other uh, edge devices then you have systems which are responsible for battery service so this might be like a arm which kind of swaps a battery or you might have charging points which charge the battery which is all which is inside the drone and then lastly you have systems that control weather so you might have hvac systems inside your box which is like essential to have feedback on this so let's kind of dive a little deeper into this and look at an example of what might back is so essential so let us say that we the drone is trying to take off and before take off it needs to make sure that the enclosure is 100% open so that it has complete access to the surrounding above it and it can now safely perform a take off however without feedback and if there is like one in 1000 or one in a million chance that the enclosure is let's say half open or did not open we might end up in a very serious accident so hence it is very essential that all of these systems are able to provide feedback to the drone to, are able to confirm the status of their multiple sub systems involved Uh, how is it we can move next thank you right uh, coming to precision landing so uh, as avish already pointed out uh, landing on the docking station is an extremely important part of reliability this has to happen 100% of the time day in day out throughout during the lifetime operation of the docking station and the drone and we have come up with a few points here which will help you set up your precision landing set a precision landing on your boxes so the first one that we seriously recommend is aerodynamic design this is primarily to ensure that the docking station does not interfere through airflow manipulations or any other mechanisms to the entire precision landing process uh, next we will be looking next we will be looking at sorry Sorry for that. Uh, next, we will be looking at height configurable precision landing. So, when we look at precision landing, this can be triggered from multiple uh, ranges of heights, and for that, there are multiple configurations of visual cues that the precision landing module requires. So, it is essential for you guys as docking station manufacturers to kind of take note of this and make sure that your configurations are always in alignment with final use cases. and finally uh, we'll come to the last uh, point in this checklist which is anti reflective materials we are trying to convey through this is that during precision landing especially during harsh weather like harsh sunlight when during the afternoon times when the sun is directly on top of your box there are chances that if the tag is not been the tag or all the visual cues are not printed properly or are printed on metallic surfaces these do get whitewashed in the sunlight 
and the drone is now just unable to figure out where the box is and where do I need to go and land. So it is important to ensure that reliability of piston landing that all visual printed materials so that they are even clearly visible even when there is direct sunlight on them. Right, so moving on to the fourth of our top 10 to-dos, uh, we are looking at connectivity now. So since these docking stations are deployed in remote locations, uh, which are obviously thousands of miles away, as good as thousands of miles away, it is essential that they are connected to, a, to the cloud and to other software systems running inside in, in cloud through very stable 4G or 5G modems or through external networks. So as docking station manufacturers, you should definitely provide the option to have an external ethernet connection to your box. And if this is being deployed in situations where an external ethernet connection or an external Wi-Fi connection is not the possibility, you should have internal 4G or 5G modems inside the box so that it is self-reliant and is able to establish that internet connection that is required. Uh, let's move on, Harish. Right, so we're almost at the halfway point of our top 10 list. And next we have is life cycle management. So again, stemming a discussion that we were having previously of having these boxes remotely deployed. That, and once these boxes, you see, reach those remote sites, they would be there for like a year, year and a half, probably even close to 10 years or so. So with this uh, sort of a time scale, there are different updates that would be going to the box. There would inadvertently, you would be facing issues with respect to hardware maintenance or with respect to kind of software issues that are boiling up inside the box. So because of this, it is very necessary that the boxes which ship out do have process to kind of accept an over the air update. There should be processes and software in place which can allow for remote access, which can allow for remote logging so that through these systems, you could have complete visibility of, of the box being anywhere in the world. Also, most of this data and the docking station itself should be able to provide information regarding hardware. Maintenances can be scheduled. These can be excellent. These are like the key points that are very essential to life cycle management and which which is which for, which kind of seems irrelevant in the grand scheme of things, but when these things go go on for over years, they become very important. Uh, next, over slide six and seven, we will cover uh, two important points, which are cameras, and then further going on into lighting. So cameras are primarily useful again as we are on the theme of remote access and remote deployments. Uh, we are looking at cameras specifically because any remote operator, so we have a box some, that is deployed somewhere and as an operator, I'm sitting in front of a dashboard. Now it, it is essential for the for that operator to have some visual cues of what is happening inside the box. It's happening in the nearby surrounding of the box so that if there is any immediate action that needs to be taken, then that can be accelerated on. Hence, it is essential that you have kind of internal and external cameras so that key modules of the box, such as the enclosure, such as the battery mechanisms, all of them are continuously monitored, as well as external cameras to make sure that uh, there are no unwanted elements close to the box. Next, if we can move on to lighting, we will see that uh, since boxes and drones, and essentially the entire DIV system has to operate not only during the day, but also during nighttime. It is essential that there is decent lighting around the box in terms of internal lights, as well as lights specifically designed for precision landing. Since precision landing in most cases is going to be a visual cue affair, it is necessary that these lights properly illuminate all that precision landing setup so that it can be performed even during night. Also, a very important factor is something like an alert beacon. So whenever a docking station does something, does an operation like opening an enclosure or so, it is necessary that you kind of uh, have these alert beacons running so that nearby people, if this is in a crowded place, are aware that, okay, now this box is gonna do something and we need to stay clear of the box. So 
while you see these do sound trivial at first they they play an instrumental part and you see uh, kind of enhancing the safety and enhancing the reliability of this overall system so avish let's move ahead uh, thanks a lot so next we will be looking specifically at climate control so uh, as havish had pointed out to us in his introduction that these docking stations are deployed in a largely varying climatic condition might go from heat to cold to very humid conditions to very dry weather all of this and it is essential that whatever be outside the internal electronics the internal drone the rc all the computational units that are present they are all kept at their nominal temperature range so that they are at their best and peak performance it is essential that we have the humidity controlled inside the box so that there is no precipitation or undue precipitation that is happening around so for this essentially what industry standards nowadays follow is the standardized hvac system which is able to kind of uh, provide all of the port and this is primarily so that all these batteries inside the box the drone inside the electronics inside are all at the best possible environmental conditions so i wish moving ahead right so coming to our second to last point in the top 10 list we have weather station and weather station is while it would seem it's something that's outside the box you would have to kind of integrate it with the box but this is primarily important so that we get real time information of the outside weather which is surrounding the docking station so let us say and we can take some examples like if it was raining outside then really be accepting any jobs then the enclosure of the box should not be opening because that could then immediately damage the drone and all the batteries present inside the box so these type of decisions that need to be taken and they need to be taken autonomously hence it is that all docking stations do come with a weather station integrated so that all of this information regarding external weather is available in near real time and all of these smart decisions and these intelligent pieces can work to make sure that all these docking station and the stations are more reliable and more secure and safe so uh, if we can move to the next one avish thank you right and coming finally to our last uh, do which is modular design so all the do's that we have seen until now have been aimed towards impacting either reliability or safety or helping with internal drone docking station communication and so on and so forth however modular design when we talk about it is most like is mostly aimed towards how quickly can failures be resolved so a portion of this is aligned towards let us say if your box is deployed somewhere and now it faces a mechanical issue which needs a part replacement now if if the design and structure of the box in itself is modular a simple part replacement can do the job however if this is a very tight knit box you might a simple part replacement might not be possible and probably an entire box replacement might have to go out which is again extremely expensive extremely time consuming and involves a lot of downtime so modular design essentially would help with quick part replacement also an added business benefit would be that on a base modular platform multiple variants of docking stations could be developed which could then support multiple drones and multiple use cases so and i think that is one of the key benefits that would be there to modular design with this i think we have come to the end of our top 10 do's list and i would like to kind of ask avish to help us understand how flight base can help Uh, docking station manufacturers and what solutions has flight base developed to kind of accelerate their go to market right right so now that you know about all the problems that we faced and how most of the uh, how you have to handle most of the issues to make a uh, make a docking station which can go into production the question is how can flight base help you with this because you know you guys have known that flight base has been in the industry working with docking stations and drone boxes for a long time now so how what do we have to offer to people who really want to you know get into this market so the first thing we have 
to we have that we can offer to you is precision landing so if a drone was to land only on its gps it would all easily have at least 2 to 3 meters of errors right and just to account for this errors which come randomly the docking station would ha have to have a landing pad which is as wide as 2 to 3 meters 2 uh, to 3 meters so just imagine how much more material weight and complexity that is for no reason so what we have for you at flight base is precision landing which is something that flight base has been working on for a really long time and we have expert uh, we have uh, you know we have basically perfected it over the years what is the next thing that flight base can help you with so we have something called as the fnds sdk now fnds sdk what is that fnds means flight node docking station sdk and what where does it exist it exists on an edge device inside the docking station like inside a raspberry pi so what does the fnds sdk do the first thing it does is that it has a it is a standardized communication protocol between the docking station and the flight now dashboard so the docking station manufacturer doesn't really have to talk have to think about where am i going to get my commands from and how i'm going to send my data to the flight now all of that is sorted out by the fnds sdk the second thing is that it's completely hardware agnostic so it doesn't matter if you're building a docking station which can support more than one drone which has you know it is it uh, does it swap batteries or does it charge batteries we don't care or you know uh, what kind of drone does it support an m300 or a smaller mavic 2 drones it doesn't matter the fnds sdk is completely hardware agnostic so whatever variant your docking station is it should be able to communicate uh, it should be able to integrate with flight now easily next thing is reliability like amog mentioned right if you have to uh, do, uh, with the workflows where drone and docking station communication is paramount we the fnds sdk essentially takes care of the takes cares of this uh, takes cares of this for you so essentially it orchest orchestrates the coordination between the drone and the docking station for example before a drone takes off it always makes sure that the uh, enclosure is open before a drone lands it always makes sure again that the enclosure is open it makes sure that the landing is safe so that the docking so, uh, so that when the docking station closes it does not damage the drone hence it again uh, you know assures you of the reliability of your operations because it does not let uh, small mistakes and errors leave lead to completely paralyzing the system and uh, you know require a human to get in and solve the problem it takes care of it takes care of this reliability for you then the next thing it can provide you is this complex workflow abstraction which i just talked about like uh, before uh, before for example before you know you take off the drone before you start a mission ideally you restart the drone and you restart the rc to clear any errors that the drone and the rc that might have accumulated by just sitting on uh, sitting there switched on right again the fnds sdk makes sure that before you start a mission all the errors are clean the drone and the docking station uh, the drone is providing its video feed and when the drone flies it is going to fly okay so this complex layer of uh, you know uh, things that you need to do the fnds sdk takes care of that again this is something that manufacturers don't have to deal deal with the last thing it does is that it comes pre installed with a whole bunch of software like the uh, so software you need for ota for remote logging for remote access all of this te technology pre comes pre installed with the fnds sdk what this is what this means is that manufacturers whose expertise usually lies in the hardware and uh, they can just focus on the hardware they can just keep you know innovate in that department try to do try to make really good software uh, really good docking stations with really innovative hardwares which are very efficient which are feature packed while we at flight base we take care of the automation for you we take care of the software for you we take care we make sure that if you ever have a firmware update it can be pushed out to the docking station you don't have to worry about these softwares anymore this is the second thing that the uh, flight base can provide to, to docking station manufacturers along with precision landing as the software now the last thing i would like to tell you before we close the session is that uh you have to consider flight base uh, because flight base has been for a long time in the industry we really have a wide uh network with different manufacturers and we really have a lot of years of experience under under our belt what this means is that we have used a whole bunch of different kind of drones and we have seen the problems and the issues that come up when you try to build a docking station we have solved these issues and we have helped docking station manufacturers solve their solve those issues themselves we have been in the market for so long that we know exactly what the users want we know uh, you know we 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 take care of the user experience we take care of the dashboard we take care of the workflows the, the fail safes and all of these essential things which make the uh, which may which allow for drone automation to actually be uh, drone automation to make it safe 
So what this means is that if you as a documentation manufacturer ever wanted to get into the industry, you probably would not find a partner better than Pridebase to, to help guide you and to help you get to the industry as quickly as possible. So I guess this was a pretty long, pretty long session with a lot of information. Uh, we are really grateful to ha have had you with us for as long as we did. The information that we shared today, uh, we have no doubt that with that information, you'll be able to build really amazing documentation soon. And with the clarity of the issues which you will face and the and the ones which we can we are tried based we can uh, help you with, we believe you can focus on you know innovation and enter the global market with your own f uh, flavor of this product. We we not we cannot wait to see what you guys can come up with. Once again, thank you, and we hope to uh, meet you soon. Meet you again soon as partners. Over to you, Swati. Awesome. That was such a nice note to end it on. And wow, we, we, we you talked about a lot of things, uh, uh, right? To, to, to quickly summarize, I suppose, uh, we talked a little bit about how to design workflows for drone automation, how to, how to streamline them properly, and how to get better components and reliable parts, and how important that is, how to establish, uh, establish robust connectivity, enable remote operability. And I guess you also uh, touched a little bit on uh, designing robust uh, fallback mechanisms that will help you, uh, you know, come back from a failure uh, and, and go back to uh, yeah, flying the drone as soon as you can. And of course, with flight now, uh, that makes the entire job easier when it comes to precision landing, uh, communication, and coordination with the docking station, and a lot more other features. So. I mean, yeah, I guess we have, oh my God, the question, the Q&A section is filling up. So uh, I'll get to as many as we can, uh, but if I can't get to all of them, you can of course visit uh, the FlightNow uh, booth. Um, as I said, at the slots that I mentioned, you can also go to our schedule and check out when we have booth, booth uh, sessions uh, happening. So I'll quickly uh, get through a few questions. Uh, the first so one So do you have is, any suggestions yeah. on how uh, to streamline the hardware testing process? Like what kind of tests are necessary? You talked a little bit about them, but can you give us a quick summary of that? Uh, Harish or Amok, uh, any one of you, if you'd like to take it. Right. So uh, like with this information that we gave in this, uh, you know, the talk, it's very clear that the docking station will come with a lot of systems. It's not just one system, right? So it's very important that each of these systems, hardware or software, they go through rigorous, rigorous testing. It's really important they are put through every single situation. They, uh, every single situation the manufacturer thinks they will be put through when they actually are in the hands of the manufacturer, uh, hands of the customer. For example, Murphy's law, right? You want every single comp uh, every single Murphy law, Murphy's law to, to be proven on your docking station in your testing rig instead of at the customer's hands. So my suggestion would be to just go just you know, take it through as many tests as possible, try to break it yourself and realize what it takes to break your own system. And that's how you can keep making it stronger. Right, right, okay. So um, <clears throat> you talked a little bit about precision landing, but uh, there's a question on the design of the landing pad itself. So uh, there's a question on like how to design a landing pad that can be compatible with more than one size of a drone, more than, more, more than one uh, drone size. So you have hobby drones and you have big drones like the M300, right. so yeah. Right, so uh, precision landing, uh, so obviously you need to make, uh, you need to have enough space for the drone to land safely. But other than that, the tags that is used for the drone to land on, those are uniform across any type of drone. So it doesn't really matter. All you need to, do, uh, and with every single uh, type of drones, we can give, uh, you know, a promise and accuracy of around 10, uh, of plus minus 15 centimeters at least. Uh, with really uh, considering even the biggest of the biggest drones, which means your charge, which means your landing pad doesn't really have to be much bigger than the footprint of footprint of the drone. It can be just you know the tolerances can be pretty tight. Okay, interesting. All right, and uh, uh, I, I guess we have time for just a couple more questions. Um, there's a question on how to integrate the uh, weather station data on on your dashboard. Is that something that FlightNow can help with? Yes, I think Amo can help with the question. Uh, yes, Avish, uh, could you just repeat that for me? I'm unable to actually, I'm um, technical difficulties with Swati. Oh, right. Uh, are you unable to hear me? Hello. Avish, can you hear me fine? Yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. I will just answer okay. the question. So the FNDS SDK again uh, comes in to save okay. uh, the show, uh, save the day over here. The FNDS SDK already has predefined routes to send the information of the weather station from the docking station to the fr uh, flight now front end uh, the, or the dashboard. And on the dashboard, we already have allowances where you can see the weather uh, of weather being reported by the docking station. In case you'd want to use a third party service, which can, can tell you the uh, tell you the tell you the weather around the location of the docking station, that is also possible. Okay. Right. Hmm. All right. Um, looks like we're yeah. I guess we have. Um, I guess we have time for just one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you all for your questions. Really, uh, I see a lot of them are still coming up. But uh, yeah, we'd have to wrap it up. Uh, but yeah, just for the final question, uh, someone asks, uh, if I'm using a DJI drone, can I extend its RC range with the, with the docking station? Is there any way to do that? I think uh, that is quite unlikely. DJI drones come already come, pre uh, come with some of the best uh, range possible for a drone to fly in. And a docking station would most, uh, le mostly just preserve that range. It would not actually help to extend it in any significant bit okay okay all right great so that brings us to the end of the session uh great thank you all so much for joining us thank you Havish and Amok for uh, sharing all these never seen before insights uh be sure to check them out uh, uh at the booth and of course uh, look, go, go to go to the reception and check out other other events that are going to happen soon and I hope to see you all uh, there Thank you all. Uh, if, unless you guys have any uh, closing thoughts, I'd like to end this session. Uh, thank you to our great audience for being here throughout the session. And like I said previously, we hope to see you again as partners someday. Yeah, awesome. sure. Uh, thanks a lot for attending, guys.